Tonight we report on a lawsuit settlement in Quincy and how the fair helps raise money for youth organizations. What's happening in sports, Bob? The annual Moses Lake Demo Derby drew a full house last night, and the Mariners drop another game to the Rangers. Here's a quick peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hello everyone, there is a cold front moving through the area tonight. This will bring a change in temperatures and also in the weather conditions. I'll have all the details just ahead with your extended forecast. I'm Bethany Jenks, and we'll have all of this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News, your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Quincy is paying $19,000 to settle a lawsuit accusing city officials of reportedly failing to release records about an investigation. The city council unanimously agreed to the settlement following an executive session. As part of the settlement, city officials do not admit that they failed to meet the requirements of the Public Records Act. Police Clerk Diana Gonzalez filed the suit in Grant County Superior Court, claiming the city denied her the reports from the internal investigations of former police sergeant Dan Dobbs. She accused Dobbs in 2014 of threatening her in regards to a complaint she filed to a former police chief about another officer's behavior. Meet Tate, a blind horse rescued from an abusive owner nearly 20 years ago who was helping children train and compete in several events at the Grant County Fair. Reporter Devin Higgins has the story. Back in the stables at the Grand County Fairgrounds, you'll find horses of all shapes and sizes, but there's one old steed who's been a longtime favorite of the crowds and the kids. Step. Good. This is Tate, a 20-year-old Appalachian mare owned since 2003 by the Marshan family based in Marlin, Washington, and has been blind since she was a few years old. Lori Marshan and her husband helped rescue Tate from years of abuse, including being struck in the head by a two-by-four, rendering her unable to see. The Marshans have been able to use Tate as a training and competition horse for their children in 4-H group, the Ghost Gamers, and she's competing at the fair in several events this weekend. Lori and her children said Tate is a gentle horse who's easy to ride and is very intuitive around people and other horses, using her senses of smell and hearing to make up for her blindness. For the Marshans, they say the $800 they spent to rescue the mare... Turned out to be money well spent. At the Grand County Fair, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. A new 7,500 barrel brewery is being built in Moses Lake. The Russell family, owners of Lake Bowl in Moses Lake since 1957, broke ground on property adjacent to the bowling alley for the new facility. It will become the home of Ten Pin Brewing Company, which was established two years ago. The new brewery will be capable of expanding to a 21,000 barrel system. It is expected to expand their market to Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. The existing brewery is inside Lake Bowl's Papa's Sports Lounge and Casino. Full production is slated to begin with the first kegs, cans, and bottles going out the door by the end of March in 2016. It's police against firefighters for the first annual Moses Lake Battle of the Badge charity softball game. Members of the Moses Lake Police Department and Moses Lake Fire Department face each other at 6 p.m. on next Wednesday, August 26th at the Larson Baseball Field. The event is free to attend and donations are accepted. Proceeds benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Columbia Basin. Police and fire vehicles are going to be on display. A bouncy house is available and concessions and entertainment are being offered between innings. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips.co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be back right after this. My name is Kat Sanderson, Managing Broker for Pillar Rock Realty Group. We love the Columbia Basin because it's our home and we want to give back to our community by kicking off our Pay It Forward campaign. 
If you buy or list with us, we will donate 1% of our total proceeds to a local charity of your choice and in your name. Call us today at 754-4444 or visit PillarRockRealty.com because we are your local real estate experts. Now for your iFiber One News Weather Center forecast. Hello everyone, I'm Cristina Sanchez with your local weather segment brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service the car. We're still under a red flag warning throughout the night since we do have strong wind gusts, wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour, maybe even stronger. And this is due to a cold front that has already moved across the area. And this is why we have been under a blowing dust advisory that will continue throughout the evening. A cold front has already moved into the northwest. This is bringing a drop in temperatures and also those gusty winds throughout the over an hours for Saturday for us here in e I do expect the winds to be up to 10 miles an hour. Within the past 24 hours, we did start off the day in the low 70s for us here in Ephraida. The average low is 60 degrees, so we're still well above normal for this time of year. Highs today closer to the average high, which is in the upper 80s, and the record high temperature for this date was set back in 04, and the record high was 103. Our sunset at a 12 for tonight. For you in Moses Lake, you did start off the day in the upper 60s, your average low temperatures in the mid 50s and highs right around that average high temperature, which is in the upper 80s and your record high temperature for this date was set back in 1992 and the record high was 102, those high temperatures that we had yesterday. Now for us here in Ephrata, currently we're right around the mid 80s, we still have those westerly winds sustained winds between 20 to 30 miles an hour, wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour, and we'll continue to have those strong wind gusts throughout the overnight hours as this cold front already moves out of the area, and it's also bringing strong, a chance of strong showers and thunderstorms. Some may become severe west of our Columbia Basin, but as we go into Saturday, that's all going to move out of the area as the cold front moves into the northeastern portions of the state, and right behind it, there will be much cooler air mass and also dry conditions across the area for us here within our Columbia Basin for Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. I do expect to have plenty of sunshine and improving conditions also along the coast throughout throughout the overnight hour, hours as that cold front moves into the northeastern portions of our state. As we take a look at the high temperatures for this Saturday, right around the mid-70s in Seattle, Yakima Valley, mid-80s, plenty of sunshine. And look at that in the northwest, still feel that drop in temperatures with high temperatures right around the upper 70s, plenty of sunshine. And let's take a quick closer view within our area. Once again, we'll feel the cool down in temperatures for tomorrow, or high temperature right around the low 80s with plenty of sunshine for us here in Ephrata. And for you in Royal City, highs will be right around the mid 80s. Within the next seven days, I do expect the highs to be right around the low to mid 80s for this weekend. Nice weather pattern, dry conditions for us. Then highs for Tuesday will be in the low 90s. To save some energy, I've used Einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you. They will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. With the money we save on our Grant PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. The ever-popular demo derby at the fairgrounds last night saw hundreds turn out to cheer on their favorite car and driver. The arena was packed and the crowd was abuzz in anticipation of the annual Moses Lake Demolition Derby. And car and driver didn't disappoint as patchwork vehicles sped around the track spewing dirt at onlookers on every turn. But what they really came to see were racers sliding, spinning, rolling, and smashing into each other, and they got plenty of that too. The night kicked off with time trials to determine order of racers in each event. Tim Montgomery, Kyle Palmer, Jordan Cobb, Bill Musgrave, Luke Carter, Lauren Ram, Sid White, and Kevin Olson took the checkers in the heat races. A big spill in the first turn in the ATV heat brought oohs and ahs from the crowd, but all was well as the driver escaped unharmed and the race continued. 
Cody Cavanaugh and company entertained the crowd as workers prepared the track for the demo derby. The group will be performing high-flying daredevil tricks on their two and four wheelers during intermission at the rodeo. There weren't many cars left for the main event as destruction ruled on the evening, but there was still plenty of smash em up action going on. The last man, or should I say vehicle standing, was Randy Haynes in the number 97 car. Austin Weber in car number 91 took second, and Robbie Jackson in car 93 placed third. Derek Hall, in return from four months on the disabled list, to toss six and a third innings of two-run ball, and the Rangers beat the Mariners 7-2. to two. M's rookie Mike Montgomery gave up three runs on three hits in the first, then settled in and got through six innings, giving up just three more. Still, the M's were in the ball game. That is, until veteran southpaw Joe Bimel gave up back-to-back-to-back -back -back home runs on three consecutive pitches. Seattle falls to 56 and 65 on the season and 10 games back of league leading Houston. The Mariners open a six game homestand Friday. Felix Hernandez takes on White Sox lefty Chris Sale in a battle of aces at Safeco Field. Hernandez is coming off a career high 10 earned runs allowed in two and a thirds innings in a 22 to 10 loss at Fenway Park. We'll be back after this short break. For 12 years, Euphrates hosted the best free music festival in Washington. This year was no exception with performers like Austin Jenks. And you're going to meet him and other headliners like Greg Raleigh, founding member of Santana and Journey. Welcome to iFiber One's Inside Look at Basin Summer Sounds. She says she talks to angels. Our spotlight story tonight is about the work of volunteers at the fair's food booths helping raise money for youth organizations. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. At Grant County Fair, they raise money by selling a hot dog or a hamburger here and a chilled smoothie or ice cream there. They're the volunteers who staff food and beverage stands this week on the fair's midway with proceeds benefiting youth. In a concession stand painted to look like Legos, Carol Hahn, coach for the Campfire First Moses Lake Robotics Camp, shared how the organization raises money. They sell cotton candy, sodas, popcorn, and ice cream to run the Robotics First Lego League of 40 academically exceptional youth. They don't have a little model thing that they can play with. It's more or less you build a robot and you have two and a half minutes to compete a challenge. Hahn recalled how the program began. We started this program with five little girls, and out of those five little girls, two of them that wanted to grow up, one of them wanted to be a teacher, one of them wanted to be an artist, and they're both at, at Central this fall um, in the engineering program. If nothing else, it encourages these kids to go to college and to look at other avenues. Nearby, Debbie Talbot and other Moses Lake youth hockey volunteers are selling fruit smoothies and other drinks with pretzels and nachos to raise money for their traveling hockey league. The youth ages 4 to 17 are playing hockey once again this winter at the city of Moses Lake's reopened ice rink. Last year we had 40 kids on a traveling team. This year we're hoping to increase our numbers because the ice rink is back open. Um, previous year we had over 70 kids playing hockey, so we're hoping to get that number back up there. Talbot said volunteers at the stand can sign kids up to play or answer questions about the hockey league. Richard Whiteman has volunteered at the Block 40 concession stand since the 1980s. He designed the stand back then, which was built by Job Corps youth. Originally a group of Moses Lake area irrigators, Block 40 raises money for youth scholarships and operates out of a community club on Road 12 Northeast. Well, we'd like it to be agriculture related, but no, that's not necessarily a criteria. Block 40 volunteers sell milkshakes and ice cream cones to raise scholarship money at their stand. The Afraid of Lions Club concession stand is spruced up this fair with a new lion mural by Afraid of artist Michael Bosnar. Bosnar also painted the mural on Afraid's Lee Theater. 
Freight Alliance President Jason Everson said money raised through the sale of hot dogs, hamburgers and drinks at the stand goes to assist youth, adults and seniors in need. All the money that uh, we raise goes to putting it back in the community, like junior joggers and uh, uh, we have a site fund and uh, you know, we have a site van that goes to the school and we build ramps and stuff for disabled people and uh, you know just scholarships and stuff like that. There's no shortage of fun foods at the fair where you can eat everything from Asian to fried Snickers, Twinkies and funnel cakes. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Quincy Foods LLC, a subsidiary of Norpac Foods, is seeking motivated individuals to fill the positions of general laborer for their corn harvest season. They have full-time seasonal openings, must be 18 years old and older, willing to work swing shift, great people to work for in a challenging food processing environment. Apply at 222 Columbia Way in Quincy between 8 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday or online through WorkSource. Quincy Foods is an equal opportunity employer. Welcome back. Moses Lake native James Sauceda is Big Bend Community College's new STEM director. His new role is lead administrator of the college's $4.4 million federal STEM grant. The money is to help the college increase student enrollment and transfer to universities to study science, technology, engineering, and math. Sauceda graduated from Big Bend in 2004 with a transfer degree, allowing him to enroll at Washington State University. He graduated with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering in 2009. He is working to earn his master's degree in mechanical engineering later this year. Big Bend President Terry Lees stated that James' story is an example of what they hope to achieve with the STEM grant. He's a local high school graduate who earned his degree and returned to the area. About 600 fruits and vegetables were entered at an exhibit at the Grant County Fair this year. Reporter Jeff Chu spoke with Master Gardener Trudy, Trudy Walsh to see how the produce is judged. The heat and smoke from wildfires this summer reduced the number of tomatoes entered in the Grant County Fair fruit and vegetable exhibit. So says Master Gardener Trudy Walsh, who is co-superintendent of the fair's agriculture building with Master Gardener Karen Fowler. Walsh says growing conditions made it difficult for blossoms to set on the tomato plants. Despite the gardening issue, about 600 fruit and vegetables were entered at the exhibit. Walsh said vegetable and fruit gardening is getting more popular. Absolutely, and composting and the whole um, buying local and um, knowing where your food comes from. And um, one of the things I'm a big proponent of and I I go around and I've gone to schools and things teaching is container gardening. So even if you're living in an apartment, you should be able to grow your own vegetables, grow your own fruits, and compost. Some of the more unusual homegrown entries included a long tromboni squash, purple tomatillos, purple cherry tomatoes, three massive onions, and a pumpkin that ripened to orange a month early. Kids also had fun with what they grew. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Prosecutors dropped felony charges against an 80-year-old Wilson Creek man for taking his ex-wife out of a nursing care facility on Christmas. Deputy Prosecutor Ed Owens asked Grant County Superior Court Judge John Antos to dismiss charges of unlawful imprisonment and reckless endangerment against Philip Pearson. The case was being moved to Grant County District Court and Pearson faces one count of custodial interference. The charge is a gross misdemeanor and Pearson can face up to one year in jail. Pearson reportedly took his ex-wife out of the McKay Health Care and Rehabilitation Center and drove the 77-year-old woman to his home in Wilson Creek. She was in the facility to receive end-of-life care and was unable to make decisions. The tactical response team entered the home to arrest Pearson and rescue the woman. In Northwest News, three firefighters are dead as raging wildfires continue to grow in central Washington and more residents are being forced to evacuate. Cairo's Natasha Chen has the story. It's hard for firefighters to continue stamping out these flames knowing three of their own died doing the same thing. It hurts, you know, it tears you apart, but at the same time, you know, we want to do what they would we want to do what they would want and that would be to finish the job. The worst is the fire 
I don't want anybody to burn. I told evacuees leaving Twisp and Winthrop who hadn't heard yet about the loss of three Forest Service firefighters. Oh, jeez, no. The fire is one thing, but uh, the loss of life is, is, uh, is, is the worst case scenario. You can always rebuild a home, but you can't rebuild a life. Right. Alan and Christine Bisnett looked out their backyard and saw this smoke coming. They soon got a visit from the sheriff telling them to evacuate. They had just enough time to grab their dogs and the lasagna Christine just finished cooking in the oven. I didn't know it was going to be that quick. The last time we had time to prepare. Everyone we talked to mentioned a last oh, time know. because they've all been through this before. You know, people lose things. Deanne Berry hadn't even unpacked the suitcase she had during last year's Carlton Complex fire. This is one of my favorite of my girls. She has photos, her Nana's Bible, and the hope that they'll all still have a home to come back to. And that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.